So I was out having coffee in my backyard the other day and all of my neighborhood birds came around. So I thought that I would give back to my neighborhood birds a little bit. I'm gonna make them a little birdhouse and I'm gonna go real artsy with it and a little nerdy and I'm gonna make it in the style of Bilbo and Frodo's house in the Shire. So I'm super excited. We're gonna thatch the roof, we're gonna paint, we're gonna do a little epoxy. It's gonna be a really good time. All that we have to do right now is get everything cut to length. Um, everything currently is milled up to the dimensions that we need it to be. And the end result is gonna be Lord of the Rings style birdhouse, which I'm pumped about. Alrighty, so for starters, you need a plan. So here's my plan. So we are gonna cut one piece at 10 by six, two at three by six, two at eight by seven, and then two at 10 by six. Um, then we'll drill a hole using a Forstner bit to create the little bird hole. And then we're gonna do some epoxy work to make these windows look like windows. We'll use a little black epoxy. We'll use um, some paint around the front of the house to make it look a little bit more natural, a little more woodsy. And we'll leave a little bit of the red poking out to look like brick. So I'm gonna do the hole for the little birdies to be able to hop in and out of. I'm gonna use the biggest Forstner bit I've got, which is a two inch bit. It's this guy. Um, and I'm gonna clamp this to the table. I'm putting pieces of scrap wood behind it because as you drill through with a Forstner bit, it needs something to bite into in order to be able to actually pull through the material. And as much as I love drilling into my bench top, I don't wanna. Perfect cut. Right now I am translating my design onto piece of wood and that will make it much much easier for me to do the detail work to come. So next up we're gonna chisel out the little markers in between what's gonna look like brick. So we're trying to emulate brick. We need to make little mark outs um, for the epoxy to slip in and be black and give it a little bit of contrast. And for that application, we're gonna use chisels. Chisels are my jam. You have a, an abundant amount of options on what kind of chisel you can use, but there's different chisels for different applications. The butt chisel is for shorter applications. As you can see, it's a lot shorter in length. The handle's a little shorter, gives you a little bit more like up and down control versus angled. Um, your bench chisels do the angling and give you a nice long blade to work with. Um, your dovetail chisels, oh right, I picked up the other one. Um, the dovetail chisels have a strong taper um, to prevent you from damaging the work that you're, you're doing for the joinery because you want those to be nice and clean and fit together. It also has a comfortable long thin handle um, that allows you to kind of angle it more and get a little bit deeper and have a little finger hole here. Just doing some door chisel work, getting the details in. Details make everything. The devil's in the details. Next up, we're gonna mix some epoxy. So epoxy always comes in two parts. Um, there's your resin portion and the hardener. You wanna make sure that whatever 
um, ratio your epoxy of choice calls for that you do it 100% accurately. Um, my favorite thing about Total Boat is that they're a little bit more forgiving than most other epoxies. You have like a two or three percent variation and it's still usable. Um, so you'll do, for this one, it's a two to one ratio. I already have the pumps set up. So the pumps are pre-measured, so it's still one pump each, but it's two to one, which is why one of the bottles is so much bigger than the other bottle. Lily is making quite a noise in the background. I'm so sorry. We're also going to add some pigment powder, uh, and that's going to tint it so that you have a little bit of depth, and it's going to basically look like the windows are, are blacked out. Cool, so the epoxy is fully dried. It sat for six hours, so we are good to uh, start working with it. I'm gonna sand it a little bit so that we can just knock these high points down, and then we're gonna put everything together and it'll be a nice functional birdhouse. And then we're gonna attach the thatched roof, which is gonna be made out of this mossy business. going to mimic the look of bricks by wood burning a circle for the windows into the area that I made with the epoxy. I always do a little dry fit just to make sure that all your measurements are right, that everything lines up where it needs to. I'm gonna put the roof on and we're gonna start by using a little bit of tight bond instant glue um, and that's gonna allow us to kind of get these in place and then we'll secure it more readily with some little nails and that will allow us to kind of flip it around and do what we need to do without it, you know, being cumbersome to put together. Uh, and then we're gonna put the moss on the thatched roof. So yeah, here we go. All right, we're getting the home ready for bird bow baggins here. If any birds actually nest in this thing. I am 100% naming a baby bird Bobaggins. That is happening. The best thing about having the instant bond is that the accelerator makes it take seconds. Peace. This is adorable. Yay! <laughs> it's so cute. Okay, I gotta tack everything in now. Just trying to get the moss spread out a little bit more so that it looks a little shire like. My Lord of the Rings birdhouse is all done. It is ready for the birdies to move in. I'm super stoked. I hope they'll like it. It looks like it belongs in the shire, so with any luck, it'll fit in well in my own backyard. Um, so we'll see, but man, I am just digging how this all turned out. The epoxy windows look believable, the thatched roof is legit, and you know, with any luck in the Philly rains, the uh, moss roof will remain alive and well. Um, you know, cause water is always good for that. So yeah, I am super here for how this turned out. I hope you guys like it. 
This was awesome.